Okay, we are now at section 5.7, analysis models using Newton's second law. Uh, here's the PowerPoint. Okay, we're gonna be concentrating on two, two types of models. The one where everything's in equilibrium. In other words, the sum of the forces equals zero and there's no acceleration. Acceleration equals zero. Now, recall, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's no motion. Uh, certainly, the, my laptop on the table, there's no motion, so the sum of the forces, the downward gravitational force on the, the computer and the upward normal force from the table uh, cancel out and there's no acceleration. But again, I've discussed a, something like a skydiver that uh, reaches terminal velocity. His downward gravitational force is equal to the upward drag force, so he's traveling, he's just traveling at a constant speed. So uh, you have to be careful when, when uh, uh, to understand equilibrium can, can it means all this, the sum of the forces all equal all the sum of the forces equals zero they all add up to zero but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no motion uh, it means that there's no acceleration and that's a big difference uh, so we're going to be studying the uh, uh, models where uh, we're in equilibrium. Uh, most of what I think we're going to show you is is no motion uh, or or accelerating under a constant force in other words where the, the sum of the forces equals some value and so then you get a con you, you get an acceleration uh, from a constant force not a varying force a constant force um, now uh, why the picture the picture you have a big cable I, I don't know how big that cable is uh, but it's uh, it's a large cable, uh, so there's tension in that cable. You can see that it's not slack. It's not you know there's n virtually no bow in it at all, no uh, parabola or curve to it. It's so there's tension. It's holding back that that boat. Now whether it's tied to another boat or to a uh, a pier, we don't know. But that that's doesn't matter. But there's tension in the string tension in that cable and that tension is probably keeping that that white boat to the right there still now in most cases this cable obviously is not negligible it's a thick cable but compared to the ship it is negligible and most of the time if you see the words like a a light string or a light cable or a, a cable of negligible mass we're going to ignore the cable it's not going to be part of the equation uh, and we'll do that when we do experiments like the Atwood machine. Um, you did it with the vector table. You didn't you didn't try to compensate or, or, or try to enter in the the strings we were using to hold all the weights in the uh, in the uh, uh, vector table experiment. So let's look at at, at a model here. Well, uh, obviously this chandelier is suspended from a ceiling. It's not moving, so everything's in equilibrium. The particle is, the, the lamp is in equilibrium. So it has two forces, the tension force holding it up and the gravitational force uh, pointing down. Guess what? Those two forces are equal and opposite. You can see the gravitational force is downward and the tension force is upward. So the sum of the forces equals zero. So it, the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the tension minus the gravitational force. That all equals zero. So T equals uh, uh, Fg. Okay? So there's a particle in equilibrium uh, where there's no motion. Okay, now, a, a particle under a net force. This is the other one. Uh, now, if you look here, the normal force pointing upward and the gravitational force going down, they're equal and opposite. So there's no acceleration in the uh, vertical direction. However, there is tension because of the young man pulling on the crate, there is tension. Now in this problem, they're saying a frictionless surface. Well, if it were truly frictionless, the young man wouldn't even be able to get traction to pull it. Um, it would have been a better dra drawing had the, the young man been on the, off of the dock pulling the, the um, the crate, but no matter. Uh, this is just pretend, just to to 
give you an idea of what it means a particle under a net force it's going to accelerate the force equals um, mass times acceleration um, okay so you have the again the vertical in the y direction you have the the vertical components uh, canceling each other out um, but in the x direction you have f of x is equal to the tension equals the mass times acceleration or the acceleration in the x direction is equal to the tension divided by the mass because uh, the tension is the force that is causing the acceleration and to calculate the acceleration you take the tension divided by the mass um, in the y direction we have the uh, normal force and minus the gravitational force uh, that equals zero so n equals f of g um, okay now the the normal force is not always equal to the gravitational force you put your physics book on the table uh, and you don't touch it the the gravitational force is one way and the normal force is another not uh, and and there if it's not accelerating then they're equal now if you push on the physics book downward the normal force increases the normal force increases as much as the applied force so if you push a little bit the normal force is only going to grow a little bit if you push it hard the normal force is going to go uh, too big and uh, if you push hard enough then the table breaks and you get acceleration but as long as the table doesn't break or whatever the supporting surface is if it doesn't break the more you push the greater the normal force gets so the the normal don't get the idea that the normal force is always equal to the uh, gravitational force um, in this case you have the gravitational force then you have the force of you pushing down and you can notice that the normal force is larger than uh, or it, it's it's the sum of the gravitational force and the force that you're applying on the book um, so f of y in the y direction you have the normal minus f g minus the f that you're applying that's equal to zero so the normal equals to the f g plus the force you're applying which is equal to m g plus the force you're applying okay now particle in, in equilibrium acceleration equals zero remember just because acceleration equals zero doesn't mean that it's it's um, not moving. So you you have a a a uh, mass here that's uh, it's got a force in one direction uh, and a force in the other direction. Now that could be let's say you have it's just a flag on the either side of a uh, rope and you're having a tug of war and if as long as the teams are equal you know they're pulling on on one on one side of the rope and the other team's pulling on the other side that that flag that's tied to the rope is not going to move the sum of the forces are opposite and equal um now let's say it's a car let's say you you're in your car and you're driving a uh a, a, a constant 60 miles per hour well you're putting a force from the engine to make the wheels rotate but if there's no acceleration you're getting just as much uh just as much friction from the friction in the roads the wind resistance everything uh is balancing out so that you're going at a constant acceleration if you're not sure of that just let off the accelerator pe pedal and see if you keep going at that same 60 miles an hour pretty much if you let off on the gas pedal you start slowing down very quickly and you'll find out what the the resistant forces are that are uh, that would inhibit prohibit you from going at a constant velocity if you weren't applying the the um, the uh, a push on the accelerator pedal so particle in equilibrium it can mean that it's still but it doesn't mean it just means that the acceleration is zero it's going at a constant velocity okay the sum of the forces in this case equal to zero um, okay particle under a net force if you apply to a four of a force and there's no opposing force you get acceleration you get acceleration in the direction of the force because force equals mass times acceleration the uh, acceleration is just a scalar um, 
it, it's a it's a scalar times a vector, so it's going to be in the same direction. The mass times the acceleration is gives you the force. Okay, but notice that the acceleration is in the direction of the net force. So um, in the example I was giving you earlier, um, if you were to uh, let off on the gas pedal, all the forces would be uh, acting against you. You'd be slowing down. Your, your velocity is going in the direction, but the force is going in the opposite direction. And guess what? Your acceleration is going in that same direction. It's slowing you down. So the acceleration is always in the direction of the net force. Um, okay, and there we'll stop, and next we'll pick up the last section, 5.8, the forces of friction.